Welcome. Welcome to the Storybook Moment for kids of all ages from 1 to 110. This is Brenda Harris greeting you in the precious name of Jesus. The one with all the power spoke to the pelican. Little bird, do we need roads and bridges? The pelican looked around at the voice with a dark look in his eye. Pelican stared towards the voice for a few seconds with a calculating look and then replied, No, we don't need roads and bridges. His tone was disrespectful and mean because he didn't want to be bothered by other things in his life except providing for himself and his family. Pelican was in a foul mood. Foul, foul, get it? <laughs> The fowl was in a foul mood. What a happy simile, or in this case, unhappy. His long white neck gulped at the thought of working on a road or a bridge. The pelican was grumpy. He didn't want to think of anything else right now except his own life. He thought to himself, Pelicans don't need roads or bridges. Everyone knows that. Their wings get them from place to place. Why, pelicans can soar and fly as high as the clouds. They have the ability to fly high and swoop back down to the water to capture their meals. Why, I have never set a foot on a road or a bridge. Hmm, the very idea. When pelican's belly was full, and his family was well fed, he was content and happy. He was very well satisfied. He saw no need for a road or a bridge. At that point, the one who had all the power opened up the eyes of the pelican. Pelican saw a moving picture of what it would be like without roads or bridges. He saw other animals traipsing through creeks and all that mud while it was raining and raining hard. They were falling and getting stuck and having a terrible time of getting from one place to another. Pelican saw lines of other friends, helpless with their little ones, trying to cross the creeks and to get out of the mud. Then all of a sudden, Pelican saw himself in the picture. He was traipsing along with everyone else. He used his wings a little bit to move around, but for some reason he couldn't get out of the situation. He could not fly away. He was stuck just like all of the other friends and strangers shown in the picture. Pelican was getting downright frustrated. He felt really helpless. He tried with all his might to get his wings to work and take him above all the trouble, but he couldn't fly away, no matter how hard he tried. He was trying to cross the creek just like the others. They were all struggling and struggling to get through the mud and the water. His wings were no help at all. He was growing more and more frustrated by the minute. Pelican wasn't too happy about it, but all of a sudden he could relate to the desperate need for roads and bridges. His compassion finally kicked in. He felt ashamed for his selfish attitude. He finally got the point. He decided that the world did need roads and bridges after all. So he turned to the voice to say that the world did need roads and bridges, but the voice was gone. Pelican spoke out loud, as loud as he could, hoping that the voice would hear and see his change of heart. Suddenly, the world was back to normal. The world had its roads and bridges again. Pelican went back to his normal routine of life. But the incident weighed heavily upon Pelican's mind. A couple of weeks later, on a long, long bridge in a very prosperous part of the world, Cars were lined up for a mile or two. The line of traffic was being held up by curious onlookers. Some were pointing and laughing. Others were staring with their mouths hanging open. 
All in all, everyone was in perfect agreement that it was such a curious thing that a pelican was working on the bridge with all the other construction workers. There was a pelican wearing a hard hat, and he was working as hard as he could to help make the needed repairs to the bridge. Little ones, learn the lesson of the pelican. God has called the unlikeliest of candidates to preach his gospel. People may be of the opinion that a preacher is just as out of place as a pelican building a bridge. They may not see the need for the preaching of the gospel. The Bible says that God has chosen the foolishness of preaching to save a lost soul. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. You may think that the preacher is not necessary and has a poor occupation at best, but God sees it as necessary and very important. In God's eyes, proclaiming his word is as sacred as anything could be. God's word will go forth in power and might and will not return void. Scripture says that beautiful are the feet of those who spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Precious one, God may have chosen you to preach his word. You may feel that you are as out of place as a pelican that builds a bridge to preach God's word. Other people may not believe that God has called you to preach God's word. But let me tell you this, let no man despise your calling. If God is calling you, listen to him and step out by faith. Obey God and submit to that calling. Then leave the results in God's hands. On the other hand, God may not have called you to be a preacher. God may very well have given you a different calling. Whatever God has called you to do is important to you, to others, and God. But God has called each of us to tell others about the Christ. For you see, when God sent his only begotten son into this world to die on the cross to save us from our sins, God built a bridge of love between himself and mankind. And now this concludes the storybook moment. Again, this is Brenda Harris blessing you in the name of Jesus Christ.